So this tutorial is going to look at uh, working with Quarto documents in the visual editor in our studio and uh, much of the content um, applies equally to if you're working with markdown files in the visual editor. The visual editors are kind of the same uh, but um, yeah we're gonna we're gonna go with Quarto for this. Um, so We've got our new RStudio project, which we set up in one of uh, the other tutorials. So I'm going to double click on that. And that's going to open the project. So at the moment, we've just got like a skeleton of a project. We've got no uh, actual files or anything. Um, and we want to create our first document. So the first thing we might need is some data. So we've got a data folder, but at the moment it's got nothing in it. So let's put something in it. So in the data folder, I'm just I'm going to nick some files from somewhere else. I'm going to copy across this CSV file. Uh, so our data folder now has some data in it. And in images, I'm going to copy it across a picture so that we can have a look at how you can embed pictures in a quarto document. Um, I'm just going to get rid of that. Now in our studio, we uh, have our file structure here for our project folder. And you can see if I double click on data, that CSV file that I just copied across is, is uh, now in there. And if we look in images, we have the image file in there as well. So, okay, to open a new uh, Quarto document, you'd go to the File menu, New File, Quarto document. Like I said, some of you might be working in R Markdown, and if you are, you know, everything I say kind of applies. Just substitute the word Quarto for R Markdown. So once we do that, we get this dialog box. We can put a title in it. Let's call it my first quarto document. You can put your name in if you want to. And what a quarto document is, is it, it's, it's kind of a document that mixes text and code. So essentially you're gonna write some text uh, maybe explanations or whatever, you can also embed code into that document. And then you do something called rendering the document. And what that does is it takes the text, it executes the code, so it sends the code off to R to be processed. And the end result is, um, you know, sort of a finished document that is a combination of the text and the executed code. This might make sense in a minute. Um, so you can render it to different formats. So by default, it's rendered to HTML, which is the same uh, format as, as websites. Uh, you can also opt to um, render it to a PDF file, but you need to have LaTeX installed to do that. And you can um, also render it to a Word file, which they don't look as nice as HTML files. I always work with HTML. If you're on one of my modules, we will be working with HTML. So you can leave the default as it is. And you can choose whether to use the, with this checkbox, the visual markdown editor, or um, if you untick that, you will work by default with uh, like a text editor. But like I said, for beginners, probably you're gonna wanna use the visual editor. So that's what we're gonna do. So click on create and you'll get basically a template appear. Uh, so it's got some text, tells you a bit about Quarto, tells you a bit about the fact that, you know, you can have uh, little blocks of code in there, etc., etc., etc. So it's just useful to begin with, I guess, to uh, have a look at what this, what this document contains. So it's got some sort of formatted text that so just shows you you can do like headings and, and paragraphs and whatnot. But it also has these sort of grayed areas, which has a little R in brackets. And these are what are known as code chunks. And these are like a little window into R. So anything you write in one of these code chunks is going to be sent off to R to be processed. So this is essentially how you do stuff, how you do uh, statistical analyses or data summaries or plot graphs or whatever. You do that using these code chunks. 
So a quarto document is a combination of, uh, you know, a sort of a word processing document where you can also write code. And when you click on this magical rendering uh, or when you start this rendering process, uh, it converts that document into um, uh, basically an HTML file. So let's have a look if we we've got this sort of template here that, that it's given us if we click this render button that's the thing that converts it to an html file this will give you a bit more of an idea of what's going on so first of all we need to save our quarto so we're in our automatically puts us in our project folder we can click on our docs because that's where we're, where we're going to put our our documents we'll call it my first ooh, quarto doc bunch of gubbins goes on and what you see over here is an HTML file and um, if we go back to the files pane and look in our docs you'll see this file here the .qmd that's the quarto file and we also have the HTML file, which is um, the, the rendered document. But we also have a folder. So by default, um, if uh, any sort of images or anything like that are created that, that are used for the HTML file, they will be put in a separate folder. And sometimes that's fine, but in most cases, we don't want that. We want to be able to just send a single file to someone. We we want our report to be like one file and we just send that file to someone for them to read. If you're submitting work on any of my modules, you just want to submit one file. So you don't want any kind of supporting materials being chucked in a folder. So that's the first thing, uh, or certainly if you're on my module, the first thing you want to do is to change that default behavior. Now at the top of the quarto file is some text and this is known as YAML and this uh, basically the YAML contains information about how the document is rendered. So in its basic form it has a title that's that's what we typed in uh, in the dialog box when we uh, initiated the document. It's got our name which is what we typed in uh, it's got the format, it's going to be rendered to HTML and it's telling us that we're uh, using the visual editor, which I guess we knew. Um, but we can add stuff to this. So the first thing to do is under format and HTML, we're going to hit return here and put a tab. The tab is important. It's, uh, the, the YAML can be quite... Um, uh, particular <laughs> about how it's formatted. So put a tab there and at the end of the HTML, we're gonna put a colon. So what this means is, is anything uh, on subsequent lines is now gonna relate to how the HTML is rendered. So we'll hit return again, do another tab, and we're now gonna add an instruction that tells it how to render the HTML. And the instruction we're gonna put is Self, so you can see our studio is helping us. It, we've typed in self and it thinks we probably want the instruction self-contained, which we do. So I can hit return and it will auto complete that. And it's also telling me the options I have, true or false. And we wanna set this to true. So what the self-contained option does is to say, don't put all the support materials in a, in a separate document, keep them. Uh, so sort of just create a single file that has everything in. So without it out, our docs folder, I'm gonna select what we did before and I'm gonna delete it. So we can just have a look at the different behavior. So we've now just got our quarto file, uh, file in there. Uh, let's render it. When we hit render, it automatically saves it. And now when we go in the our docs folder, you can see there isn't that additional folder. We've just got a, a single HTML file that kind of exists in its own uh, world. And that will, um, you know, basically if you're doing coursework or whatever, that's what you're gonna submit, that HTML file. Uh, we will talk a bit more about YAML later because there are some other things you can do with it. But for now, let's move on.